Phase Zero Season 4, Episode 10 starts right now. I am BD, joined today by Jenna Anderson. Hey, everybody. We got Aaron Perrine. What's going on, everybody? And that's today's squad, as all of us. It's the Fantastic Three today. Uh, we got a lot to talk about on today's show. If you missed it, we just did a review of x-men the last stand x3 it's available now on all the podcast platforms the road to deadpool and wolverine continues coming up on monday we're going to do x-men origins wolverine charlie ridgely is going to join us for that one so it'll be fun charlie loves bad movies so i feel like that's gonna bump the wolver the the score there uh but we'll see we'll see we got a big show today we're continuing with the phase structure for phase zero first we got we got to talk about the spider-man 4 stuff uh, this this new quote about Spider-Man 4 that really popped off and made us all think, hmm, maybe it really is happening with Toby and Sam uh, Raimi. Kirsten Dunst is yapping about superhero projects, too. It's all connected. Uh, but also Chris Evans did a panel at Emerald City Comic Con. I talked to Aquafina, star of Shang-Chi, recently. So we'll have that on the show. Uh, phase 2, we got some more news from, you know, Bob Iger talking his talk. Ray Winston talking some talk didn't didn't have a good time on black widow spoiler alert uh an update about the leader in captain america 4 uh and dakota johnson is in phase three for bed whether she wants to be or not and i think she's leaning towards <laughs> not she's in phase three of our show so there's a lot of talking to talk about and then of course aaron has a spicy nugget i promise you you don't want to miss it spicy nugget of the week if you are uh, uh if you have ad dollars spend them on the spicy nugget let's get sponsored by chick-fil-a sauce uh oh all right Let's kick this off with uh, the reason why I think a lot of people are here today. Thank you for joining. Subscribe to the show. Play it for your mom. Play it for your dog. Phase Zero, uh, the greatest community of canine listeners on the planet. Spider-Man 4. This became a thing because Chris Killian, love the guy, did an interview with Thomas Hayden Church, Sandman, in Spider-Man 3, right? Yes. And yes. Spider-Man No Way Home. I was like, wait a second. It's not Spider-Man <laughs> It was Spider-Man nope. 3. And Spider-Man No Way Home, he just returned. So Thomas Hayden Church is on the promo train for his new project. Chris Killian, of course, when you do an interview with comicbook.com, you got to expect we're going to ask the comicbook.com questions. So Chris Killian did just that and uh, got a pretty interesting answer. So let's we're going to interpret what he said. But instead of reading you the quote back, we just wanted to give you full context. Here's what he said and how he said it. Richard, can you roll the tape? Given the choice, would you... Like, if you had an opportunity to do both, would you rather play Jack or Sandman again? You know, Jack, I don't think it's ever going to happen. There was some conversations about it probably three years ago. There were some conversations about maybe, but it's such a unique thing. Um, you know, I never really spoke to Paul about it. We exchanged messages. I did talk to Alexander a little bit about it, and then the producer, Michael London, and, of course, Searchlight was chomping to do it, you know, because that's like, you know, that's a that's an automatic hit, mm -hmm. I mean, especially with Alexander, Paul and I together again. Um, and, and, and I was actually, they pitched me the story of what they wanted us to do, which is a great idea. And... Um, there was some talk about it, but then it just sort of, I don't know, it just drifted away. But Sandman, there's been some rumors that they might ask me to to do another Spider-Man. And well, I'd, I'd do it tomorrow. I hope so, man. Or maybe, maybe, maybe Secret Wars or having you pop up anywhere would be uh, awesome. You know, they, they've never asked me to, to show up in another movie, an, another Marvel film. But, you know, I think Sam is going to do another Spider-Man with Toby. And, and that's the one that, that, you know, I, I was actually, they, they had an option for me to do Spider-Man four when there was going to be a Spider-Man four, mm -hmm. um, they, they had an option on me to come back. So if it happens, that would be fantastic. That's hey, awesome. I'm yeah. just getting, <laughs> I'm getting a little old. <laughs> no, you look great, man. Don't, don't say oh, you, so. you do I, whatever you're doing. Keep doing it. All right, so that's the clip. That's the context. That's everything he said about Spider-Man 4. Aaron, what are you thinking? Does Thomas Hayden Church know something, or did he read something online like the rest of us? I mean, it's impossible to tell 
<laughs> I mean, it's a, it really kind of is, but he he sounded very, very resolute about it. And of yep. course, the internet decided to uh, telephone game our piece. I saw Chris's mug everywhere for about a day and a half, and I was like, oh, I know that guy. Um, it probably, the, 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 the tenor around this whole Spider-Man 4 thing with both Raimi and McGuire, and then we'll get to someone else here in a second, all tiptoeing around it. It sounds like that might be a thing that happens before Secret Wars now. Yeah, there was conviction in that voice. Jenna, what'd you think? I I feel like he might have just read something online. Like I would love to be incorrect in that sense and for him to have actually heard something concrete that it's actually happening. But it seems like this is kind of becoming an increasing trend of people involved with these projects hear something through the grapevine or read something online. I know Tilda Swinton had a quote about like Constantine too, and everyone was like, she had specifics in her quote that it was like, this is not even written up anywhere, but she heard it through the grapevine. So that this could just be a similar instance where he might think that it's happening, but I would love for it to happen, but I don't know how it could happen. But he definitely seems enthusiastic about it. So I was on a bit of a roller coaster watching that clip. This was my first time watching the clip all the way through. I read the quote and I was like, oh, this man knows. Then you watch the clip and he says rumor. And you're like, oh, OK, he read online. But then Chris talks back to him, has a good time with him, brings up Secret Wars. And he clarifies and says they never asked me to do a separate Marvel movie. They just had an option for me for. But he said with so much conviction when he said, I think Sam and Toby are doing Spider-Man 4. I was like, wait a second. The, what, that part took it from, I think he read something online to, I think he knows something. But again, it could just be a thing where he's reading stuff online like the rest of us. This is not a confirmation. We certainly are not taking this as saying, yo, they're going to send us an email with a release date here in a moment. But I don't, for the life of me, understand why uh, uh, Sony won't just make a Spider-Man movie. Uh, unless it's some sort of deal with Marvel Studios where as long as they're collaborating with Tom Holland and the MCU, they can't make a Spider-Man movie, which I think is something we, that might be going on that we don't know about that hasn't become public information, because if not, that is just terrible business. The worst business decision. You're cranking out Madam Web and Craven and El Muerto and you own the rights to Spider-Man. There must be a reason why you're not. And I think that maybe they have a deal in place part of the collaboration is they can't make they have miles freaking morales and they're only making him animated which is great the animated movies are fantastic that's not a slighted animation at all but there's no denying a live action miles morales movie probably makes more money live action movies tend to be you know more mo make a bit more money especially in the superhero space so i don't know spider-man 4 with toby and sam i would be more surprised if it happened than if it didn't uh but I do think there's a pretty good chance Toby might play the role again in another movie. I just don't know if he's going to do a standalone Spider-Man for regardless of what it seems Sandman actor Thomas Hayden Church has heard or read online. An interesting oh. quote, no less. I agree with that completely. I feel like Toby is a no-brainer for Secret Wars. Like that mm -hmm. is one of the few castings that feels set in stone to me, even as this movie is so nebulous. But I, I'm not necessarily holding my breath for Spider-Man Four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think Amazing Spider-Man Three is more likely than Spider-Man Four, and I wouldn't even be mad about it to be honest. I, w I really want both, but if I had to choose one, it would be tough. Andrew Garfield's redemption arc. He's like Hayden Christensen of, of Spider-Man actors, man, and uh, we love to see him get his flowers. Uh, but the, the, they're, the, these aren't the only actors talking about superheroes from that original Spider-Man franchise. Kirsten Dunst is out here talking, too. Yeah, so Kirsten Dunst talked to Marie Claire, and she was asked, would you do another superhero project? And she gave a very pragmatic answer. She said, yes, because you get paid a lot of money, and I have two children, and I support my mother. So first of all, we respect her for that. And then she talked about kind of her career after Spider-Man, and she said, like, that, and I think she means superhero movies by that. That's great for some people. I'm. It's not the artist that I want to be. It was just growing up and migrating to things that spoke to me. I always just navigated with my heart. So she's not ruling out the possibility of coming back, which is interesting in and of itself. What do y'all think? She's in Secret Wars. <laughs> no, actually, I would be really happy to see her come back in Secret Wars, though, because yeah. just the touching little bit of dialogue, those of us who grew up, we're all close enough in age to have had a similar experience watching the OG Spider-Man trilogy when Toby's Spider-Man is in that side, is talking to Andrew Garfield's and he's talking about, well, you know, we kind of figured things out. I mean, you know, and we get a little taste of what happened after Spider-Man three. Uh, I thought that was great. And I would love to see if Toby is in Avengers Secret Wars, which I think he will be. If I were a betting man, I would bet the house on it uh, that he's going to be back, that they're going to bring everybody back that is 
able-bodied and it can and alive to, it can can be in the in this movie that's ever done a Marvel movie. Uh, maybe not everybody, but a lot of the big players. And I would love to see if we go to uh, Toby's universe. And I think that that's another great way to make us care about an alternate universe in the multiverse saga, something we've talked at length about on this show, about how until Loki season two, I didn't give a damn about another universe that the Marvel Cinematic Universe introduced me to. Um, so that'd be cool. Anyway, yeah, Aaron, Aaron what do you think? Kirsten Dunn's going to be in Secret Wars. you think we'll ever see her play a superhero part again? Uh, a famous point of Aaron Snark from like undergrad days was that we would see Marie Antoinette too before we ever saw her in another Spider-Man <laughs> thing. But times change, you know, like, so I think that if we do get a Spider-Man for it, absolutely. Just because of like, I, I've been joking around about this with Jenna on the side is that she wrote that beautiful article about how the multiverse needs to be more than nostalgia, but like it puts butts in the seats. And that first clip of, you know, old man Toby swinging around and Kirsten Dunst and they don't like age them down or anything. And you've seen there'd be time or whatever pass in a Sam Raimi directed movie would rival the trailer for a Deadpool Wolverine for a lot of fans mm. out there. So I, I, you know, nothing, nothing is impossible anymore. Like, and also I would like to say as Brandon and all of us have like joked around about in the past that, there's a there was an air of wait a second this is possible to Spider-Man No Way Home that completely changed the trajectory of that movie where they just said forget it we're never going to have the chance to do this again or we it might not happen so let's just do it now if the forces you know if we have a weird uh you know celestial alignment where it allows Sam Raimi and Tony McGuire and Kirsten Dunst to be in a thing and just go get Topher off the couch uh <laughs> I would really enjoy that Eric in the chat is suggesting that Jesse Plemons needs to be involved in some capacity. And now I like <laughs> desperately need that of just cast him as some <laughs> bit part character who wasn't in the Raimi movies. But like to your point, Aaron, now I'm just imagining like as much as I still stand by my argument. Too? No, the, as much as I still stand by my argument about the multiverse and nostalgia, like if they were to recreate the upside down kiss in like a modern context, the internet would explode. Like it would be unparalleled. So now I'm kind of like, I selfishly want that, even though I recognize it's just nostalgia at the end of the day. Yeah, that's right. Hey, nostalgia is okay. It made, uh, it made Spider-Man No Way Home a lot of money. Not yeah. so much for the Flash, but no. you know. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of nostalgia, this next guy's already getting nostalgic. It's oh, been five God. years. It's been five long years, and Chris Evans is still out in his shed making pottery, but he took a break from that <laughs> to speak to the crowd at Emerald City Comic Con. They asked him about his favorite MCU movie, and surprise, surprise, it's Winter Soldier, just like a lot of you watching. Um, he said, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, is my fa personal favorite Marvel movie that I was a part of. It's not just for the movie itself, but the experience. The first film, I was so nervous. You know what you're stepping into, and as a result, you're playing de defense, and you're playing not to lose. When Winter Soldier came around, we were playing to win, and it's the first movie with the Russo brothers. We were taking more risks, and the character felt more fleshed out. It was one of the more satisfying experiences I've had in my Marvel run. So uh, he just sounded like he just had so much more confidence, and I mean, listen, we talk about, like, the celestial alignment the more time that goes on it's like wow the fact that winter soldier even happened in that way is very very impressive uh do you agree with his assessment about the winter soldier being his personal favorite is there another movie you would forward as your favorite moment with chris evans say no America's he's behind. absolutely right <laughs> okay he's correct i'm i'm gonna, I'm gonna say something controversial I, I love Captain America Civil War. I do love Winter Soldier. But more than Winter Soldier? I mean, I recognize the Winter Soldier is probably a better movie. It's probably like the best, if not, you know, it's one of the best, if not the single best MCU movie. But Civil War, that one holds a special place in my heart. And every time you mention it online, everybody hates you. So I, uh, I like every time you say Iron Man was right, when you speak your truth and you speak facts and say <laughs> Iron Man was right, everybody gets all riled up for some reason. It's almost <laughs> as if you feel guilty for supporting the other guy, but they should. So I would just say Winter Soldier is a fantastic movie. It also was it felt like a, a, that 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 was 2014, right? It yeah. was. Same year Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Yeah. 
Uh, that felt like a really pivotal year for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They had a banger of a spy thriller. It was grounded. It was gritty. It was fantastic with Winter Soldier. And then they showed we can go in a completely other direction. We can do Guardians of the Galaxy. You love seeing helicarriers fall out of the sky in Washington, D.C. Well, guess what? Now you love a talking tree and a raccoon. So that was that's probably one of my favorite years of the MCU overall, too, aside from 2018 and 2019, which are just unparalleled. But, uh, yeah, that was that, I think he, he makes a good point. Chris Evans has good taste. Chris Evans has good taste. Well, he uh, does have I, good taste, and he's he's judging some of the other tastes. Uh, when someone asked him about superhero movies, and he's trying not to throw shade, he said that making superhero films isn't easy. If it was easy, there'd be a lot more good ones. And I'm not even trying to throw shade. Some Marvel projects are objectively phenomenal films. Somebody asked him, probably asked Bob Madden, but he's just trying to <laughs> now, 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 man, this is this is the could. guy. See. Now I'm mad. You know, Chris Evans makes good points, but now that I've thought about it, I'm mad. That dude jumped Iron Man with his buddy. I don't care. They were jumping his ass, and nobody wants to talk about it. Bro killed his mom and said, all right, let's get him. Two on one. Handicap match. You sound like the entirety of Dune discourse on Twitter right now, acting oh, as if the actors in Dune condoned the actions of the movie Dune. Like that, you sound like Chris Evans, the actual person <laughs> participated in Civil mm -hmm. War. Timothy Chalamet has five minutes to respond. <laughs> <laughs> that's how some people on the internet are acting um i do think i do think chris evans makes a good point here i do think that it it there is it is kind of a tough nut to crack sometimes there's a reason why we come on here and don't like some movies as much as other movies like it is a feat to really succeed in this space so mm -hmm. i don't think he's incorrect at all no, I think he's right. And I think that we see that recently in the MCU when they try to do too much at once and these projects weren't getting the time and attention and the sort of, you know, massaging to make them of the of the quality they were when there was less projects. Uh, so when they try to do too many, they proved it's not easy to make these movies. You can't just crank them out like a machine. You got to really give them all the TLC uh, and, and and then you get some good ones. If, if, there, if it were easy, there would be more. And when there were more, they weren't quite as good. So I think he makes good points. And he would know. He, I think he would know. Hard for us to sit here and be like, what does Chris Evans know about making superhero movies that I don't? Like, no, uh, I think Chris Evans would know better than, than anyone who streaming this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a superhero film coming soon to a Paramount Plus stream near you. Yo. We um, also um, should acknowledge, though, that he has been in two franchises. Like, he was in kind of the pre MCU era sure. and in the he MCU. Was. So I feel like he is one of the few people uniquely able to understand, like, the different ways that you make a superhero movie. So, so if he's in Secret Wars and you had to choose one, he's showing up as Captain America, but a variant, not the same cap, or he's Johnny Storm. Which Chris Evans Marvel hero do you want to see in Avengers Secret Wars? Cap, as long as it's not Hydra Cap. Like, I don't I don't want that. And the people who advocate for that, I'm like, no, thank you. Um, but I purely because there are so many characters in the MCU right now that I desperately would love to see Steve Rogers, even if it's a variant, interact with. So that would be my answer. I, I've always kind of dreamed of him being a pastiche of himself in Secret Wars, where he gets he finally gets to wear the goofy little helmet with the little wings. And he's very inspirational, but also corny. So my my pick is 50s, 90s, like uh, like Steve Rogers, where we get another version of I I and Steve with some <laughs> other weird character that he would never interact with. It would be very, very fun. I love it. I'm going to I'm going to give a cop out answer here and cite Avengers Endgame as proving this is possible. But I want to oh. see his Captain America, <laughs> meet his Johnny Storm. And I want to see Tony Stark sitting there like, oh, who the hell is this guy? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> like, I think that. Uh, OK, Flame Boy. Well, you with the shield, you know, I think that that would be uh, amazing. And I just wrote the best scene in Secret Wars. You're welcome. <laughs> Jeff. Eric Bender in the comments is, is right there with you. But he's he's been watching the WrestleMania promos, Richard. Richard, can we get Eric's comment on the screen? Wait, what's the... Re Actually, I want to see Chris Evans as Cap and Human Torch looking at Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger and Human Torch. <laughs> I don't care. If it doesn't make sense, just make it. That would be Book great. It. Book it. Act like The Rock started right in the universe. Book <laughs> it. And then all the Captain America crybabies will be saying, but well, we want him as Captain America. America. Oh, boy. Sorry, that's, that is a... Uh, that is, uh, that is a wrestling reference. They happen every once in a while. They slip out. Okay. Or so they happen. Uh, if you get it, phase zero is even better. If you don't, I hope you still have a good time. 
Uh, real quick, one more thing, one more little exclusive little clip here before we take a break. I got to talk to Jack Black and Aquafina. Uh, you might have heard of Jack Black. He's been in a couple things. But this Aquafina star uh, of Shang-Chi, I posed the question to them both. I won't waste time explaining it. You're going to see it anyway. Richard, can we roll the tape? We'll see first. A new Tenacious D album or Katie returning in a Shang-Chi sequel? I feel like there's... Uh... <laughs> ooh, ooh. I hope both. <laughs> I mean, I definitely foresee a Tenacious D album coming soonish. Yes. But I, I hesitate to say if it would be before that. Uh, yeah, I don't. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see down the road. Yeah, we'll now see. Now it's not at liberty to say, clearly. We shall say. We shall see. Now it's about Kung Fu Panda 4. Can't wait for everybody to see it. It's super fun. Yeah. Thanks, Dude, guys. You know you guys another are... way to say Kung Fu Panda 4? That. There's four fingers. Okay. 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 <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. Oh. Is that, is that, that, that the official? No, People is that the official? People will be confused. Look, is it Kung Fu Panda School or of Rock Or Longhorns or Longhorns. No, it's four. Uh, so really no information to gain out of that unless you want to you want to do some body language dissection and figure it out. Uh, it seems Aquafina might be keeping a secret, but that might just be my optimist uh, hope and praying wishing for Shang-Chi sequel. Uh, part of me also just read it as that she's hesitant to even say anything because as we discussed last week on the show with Dustin doing the Naruto movie and like everything else being in flux like when are we even going to get Shang-Chi 2 so she might just be like I don't want to say anything that could be interpreted as it's in development and happening at this point so mm -hmm. but I don't know she's definitely biting her tongue either way yeah yeah so, it seems shout out Stamina MC in the comments that's a handbrake skid in vocal form right there yeah dual track drifting she she probably does know something but she can't tell us handbrake skid in vocal form <laughs> that's a high quality comment <laughs> uh all right hey we have almost 700 people watching live right now please go ahead and subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you're watching live if you're listening to us in podcast form we love you we know you listen to us in traffic I've had people say they listen to us at the gym I've seen people play our show on their big screen for their dogs uh there's actually somebody we got to get like a phase zero sticker in the mail for that guy i responded yeah. to him but i've been so damn busy for the past few days uh and quite literally like on a survival island thing so i'm <laughs> back in the world in reality so i got to get back to you and get that in the mail we got a lot more coming up bob Iger talking his talk moon knight season two update captain america four hulk villain quote you know stuff like that ray winston hates the mcu apparently uh but that's like a, almost a real thing it's not like a jamie hates this thing type joke it's like ray <laughs> winston actually seems to hate black widow uh, X-Force movie stuff. And of course, you know, you got to stay tuned for not only Aaron Spicy Nugget, but Dakota Johnson. So, so good gosh. Uh, all right. Subscribe to the channel during the break. We'll see you in just a moment. We'll be right back. Back. Oh, welcome back to phase zero. We are now in phase two of our show. Um, and this is a story that I was really excited to include in the rundown. So Bob Iger spoke at a Morgan Stanley conference this week, and he made some comments about Disney's theatrical output that have kind of sent the internet into disarray. Um, they're very confused and worried about what this might mean for certain MCU projects. Um, so he said, we've actually made those tough calls. We've not been public about it, but we've killed a few projects already that we just didn't feel were strong enough. And then he was specifically asked about Marvel 
Marvel and superhero fatigue. And he said, a lot of people think it's audience fatigue. It's not audience fatigue. They want great films. And if you build it great, they will come. And there are countless examples of that. Some of ours and some are others. Oppenheimer is a perfect example of that. Just a fantastic film. Focus is really important. We reduced the output of Marvel, both the number of films that they make and the number of TV shows. And that really becomes critical. But I feel good about the team. I feel good about the IP we're making. I talked a lot about the projects. We look years ahead, really. And it's iterative. So... A, a subset of the internet is convinced that this means Blade might be dead, which is kind of hilarious, but they're also just wondering like other projects that could be in development and not have gotten off the ground yet might not be a guarantee anymore. How do we feel? Like, they're, they're, I feel like, Brandon, do, do you want to go or do you want me to go first? Because I feel like you have a lot <laughs> ahead, to say, too. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just, go ahead. okay, there's, there's so many funny things about this. For example, I just want to go off the top rope from the first minute. And the only reason Oppenheimer happened is because Warner Brothers pissed off Christopher Nolan and they said, we're going to put Tenet out into that ghost town of a theater system because you won't let it release on Max. And then Universal was like, here's a blank check to do whatever you want. And it ended up cashing out. Like, a lot of things are there. But the funniest part is the core of that story is to respect the people making these things. The, the people that make the actual product. Shout out anybody in the comments who wants to see that Acme, the Coyote Acme movie get made. Which I now kind of want to see get made too. Because I'd love some proof of all this. Oh, these movies aren't good enough to release. We're just going to write them off for purposes. Um, secondarily. Girl. Wait, what? What did you say? BD? And Batgirl too. Yeah. Oh, Batgirl too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen. I would bet good money, good money, that Batgirl is better than at least two of the last three things that DC has released. I I feel great about that. Um, Great about that. And I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to stick up for Jamie, who's not here, and Michael Keaton. Now, I said less than six months ago, when we talked about a slowdown, when we talked about turning down content, that that all sounds good until it hits something that you really care about. We aren't even six months in. We ain't even a year in. I haven't even hit summertime yet. I'm still trying to get right for outside. If, if it is Blade, if it is Blade, which I mean, it's probably not, but it could be. Like, I, the five of us there are waiting on Armor Wars, the other <laughs> stuff that's just, like, in limbo right now. Like, we're already here, guys. Some of the stuff you, you're going to be... I don't want to hear a single thing about they never followed up on this plot point. They never did this and never did that. If the plans are changing midstream, that makes it happen. Jamie Lovett, who's one of our editors here at comicbook.com, joked around that the movie fans and TV fans are basically getting what happens all the time in comics now, which is there are plot threads that get introduced, they get forgotten about over time, and they never get resolved. And that un unintentionally, that's what's going to happen a lot here, you know? I, I I completely agree. I do think Batgirl was such a turning point of like, and as I say, this is someone who desperately wanted to see that movie, still wants to see that movie. I think it proved in this industry that just because you announce something, just because you make something doesn't mean you have to put it out if you don't want to. So I think the fact that like we, we have all of these projects that are guaranteed already in the minds of fans and even like so many more that are rumored that people want to see happen, there's a chance that they might not happen now, which is just kind of a wild uncharted territory to be in. I don't get anything from this that makes me think Blade isn't happening. Uh, I, I still, I mean, Blade might be delayed again, uh, is probably, but I still think Blade is a movie they really want to make. I think Bob Iger, it really wants to focus on IP that they know will work uh, because they have taken chances on lots of new characters who have never been featured in movies or shows before. And they saw a slight decline in viewership and box office over the past few years so i think right now uh they're trying to figure out like okay we want to use characters like blade is already pre-existing character blade is going to be a character that gets people excited it's a bit easier to do blade than even like probably a nova right now which bums me out i want richard Ryder in the mcu they've been freaking promising eventually yeah, you're gonna see nova for a decade now but uh you know i, I still think blade's coming but i would really it's so interesting to see like the, the factors of the past few years and the sort of uh, I guess the decline of return for Marvel Studios with viewership and box office dollars. There's so many arguments to be made about it, whether it's because Captain America and Iron Man aren't there, whether it's because there was too much content, whether it's because they're just not as good anymore. 
what you know there's those are the three biggest i hear all the time that we lost chris evans and robert downey jr they put out too much this stuff sucks oh well also people are like well it's woke now it's too many it's mcu i'm disregarding that bullshit so we're just going to stick to the three possible actual factors so uh i i think uh i would love to see i would love to have seen any version of the mcu dealing with only one of them so we could see which is actually it obviously i think all of those are valid I think those ha all play a part, and as a whole, they might be a harder impact. But I would love to see which one of those really is the true big impact. And I think Bob Iger recognizes doing too much is undeniably going to hurt it out overall and make them feel less like events as they did from 2010, 2008 to 2019, and then even 2021. We were really feeling that, but then it just got every week we had something, so it kind of wore it lost its shine a bit. But yeah, no. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what old Bobby Iger does now that he's back in office. We'll see. One thing he's doing is releasing Moon Knight and the Falcon of the Winter Soldier on 4K and Blu-ray, so that's cool. The Moon Knight steelbook looks really good, by the way. I know Jim is excited to skip through those Blu-rays. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the Moon Knight Season 1 steelbook lists it as the complete Season 1, while Obi-Wan says complete limited series. What does the Falcon of the Winter Soldier say? I don't I know actually off the top two. of my head. I think I think it might be series two. Charlie Charlie singled this out in Slack, and I was like, "Well, that's probably so." The Falcon Warrior Soldier says series because they're not doing season two. So Moon Knight says complete season one because they, as our tin foil hats will lead us to believe, could be doing season two. I think Moon Knight's going to get a season two. I don't think Moon Knight's going to get his own movie. I think we'll see Moon Knight again in a season two on Disney Plus, probably thirty three years from now. But I think it'll <laughs> I think it'll happen. Right, I mean that's 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 one that feels like a safe bet. We've just played this game with Moon Knight so many times. I remember, like right after the finale aired, they like changed what category that it was going to be in for the Emmys, and yep, like changed right. certain tweets that said watch the entire series versus watch the entire season. So it is. It feels like a problem that Moon Knight has uniquely had because we don't know where that character is going to be otherwise, especially depending on how Blade takes shape and Midnight Suns and all of that. So yeah, I, I think that they're definitely keeping the, the door open to do a season two. We know Oscar mm -hmm. Isaac wants to do it, but I think it's just a matter of logistics and everything else in the franchise. Um, the, uh, the, the Marvel website does say first season for Falcon Winter Soldier as well. Okay. So oh, it really? says first season for both. I think Moon Knight's more likely to get a second season. Yeah. But uh, well, also, Fal it wouldn't be called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier no. anyway. Uh, by the end of it, it was Captain America. Oh, yeah. Midnight Suns. Jake, Jake in the comments. We're with you, man. We need that Midnight Suns movie. We'll get there. That's that's the sort of event movie I think they might want to make, though, down the road. You know what I mean? It'd be cool. That would be cool. Uh, what else we got here today? The tracks just don't seem to to line up ever. But the tracks are leading Tim Blake Nelson towards Captain America Brave New World. He talked to Chris Killian, BD's tag team partner, about Marvel's big movie next year. We'll see about that. Yeah, I hope I hope so. He says he's retired, BD. Richard. I know. Don't they the all man. say that though? All the go all the greatest <laughs> always say that, don't they? <laughs> they do. Mm -hmm. Rich. Like I want to see this man's lovely face. Not in. There's been a lot of reshoots and reported changes to Captain America Four. I just need you to please confirm that we're that that we're still going to see you as the leader. That's all and I want. You're going to see me in a big way. Yes, I love that. Uh, I'm so excited. I've been waiting for like 15 years to see this come back around. Yeah, um, and what they've come up with is great. short and sweet <laughs> that's that guy he's like i'm not telling y'all nothing else about this movie uh so uh, we getting big head leader it sounds like i know everybody? he did give a quote to comic book movie where he basically hinted as much like he kind of said it was a very comic accurate look that they have assembled for this movie so that has me optimistic i'm very curious to see how that's going to translate and how much of it's going to be practical versus vfx but i'm glad he's still in the movie as as chris said at the start of his question because i know there's been a lot of rumors about what this movie may or may not be anymore so yeah i mean i think the leader is pretty much the centerpiece villain of cap four in a big way uh so yeah i think i think oh i didn't even mean to repeat what he said but yeah we are <laughs> going to see him in a big way 
Um, also, I want to shout out, we got over 800 people watching live today. Thank you so much for joining us on Phase Zero. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We do this every Wednesday, and on Monday we are reviewing X-Men Origins Wolverine, so you have between now and then to watch it and catch up with us on the road to Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, we got we got to start moving a little quickly here. We got a lot more ground to cover, some big news, uh, and not a whole ton of time to do it. Jenna, keep us rolling. Yeah, so Ray Winstone, who was uh, Drakov in Black Widow, uh, spoke to the Radio Times about his experience, um, and he said, it was fine until you have to do the reshoots. Then you find out that a few producers have to come down and your performance is too much, it's too strong, that's the way Marvel works. It can be soul-destroying because you feel like you're doing great work. I actually said, quote, you ought to recast it because that was it for me, and you end up doing it again because you're contracted to do it, otherwise you end up in court. It's like being kicked in the balls. Uh, well, as somebody recently just, <laughs> I, was, I was just, I was, I was letting you make that joke yourself. <laughs> Dear God, I feel for the man because I'll tell you what, you watch my match. I took what, whoa, <laughs> oh my gosh. So if it feels that bad, Ray, to get paid to play a Marvel villain, bless you, man. I'm so sorry you had to deal with it. Uh, whatever. You know, that sucks. I, I, I don't imagine Ray wins. I, I thought he was a good, I thought his performance in Black Widow was good already. Maybe he was going super violent or super, super intense to the point that it was going to push it into a too adult oriented villain for the Black Widow movie. That's kind of how I take this. They had to reel him in so that it, so that kids could still watch this so that it wouldn't get too intense or too scary, uh, especially with the themes that his character was dealing with already with those characters. I think uh, he was probably pushing it and this isn't a criticism to him. I'm sure he was pushing it in a way that made the villain even more terrifying and awful. Uh, but I think Marvel might have said, hold on, we, we, we can't go that far, Ray. Reel, reel it in, bud. And he probably was real, real pissy about that. I could see it being that, but I also know that there's the the conspiracy theory that they might have changed the Taskmaster storyline um, just based off of certain shots and the heights of Taskmaster in certain scenes and whatever. So it might also be that of like they just had to reshoot huge chunks of it to accommodate that. But I don't know. I don't blame him for having this reaction, but it is kind of wild to hear. What, yeah, it just seems favorite, like the... Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, one of my favorite villains post uh in phase four and five like i yeah. love how menacing and crazy like i'm like yo you really hate that dude at the end so i'm terrified of whatever's on the cutting room floor like yeah. he's much worse mm -hmm. like i think bd's right i think you've got some little kids uh having the multiverse of madness reaction where they're like ah, you know what i'm real scared i don't know mom we, we mm -hmm. came in for a good time we've been attacked so yeah what do you say bd uh i don't even remember <laughs> oh okay <laughs> i forgot all right we're gonna take one more break when we come back we got uh deadpool stuff we got uh x-force movie details and dakota johnson this girl this is this gonna be the last time we talk about this woman no absolutely you know, not absolutely oh god not. well she wishes it would be uh we'll talk about that and then we got the spicy nugget of the week so we'll see you in just a moment subscribe to the channel during the break uh and share our show with your friends and play it for your dog see you in a moment
Phase Zero, Season 4, Episode We're back. What's going on, guys? And we're in Phase 3, so it's time to talk about uh, Deadpool 3. We got Karen Sony uh, teasing some new cameos. I'm going to trim some of this because we are rushing through. But he said, this new MCU version is ultra secretive. There's a lot of surprises. Let's just say a lot of people traveled to London. He told that to Variety. So are we expecting even more people to pop up? Are even more of the rumors true than we previously believed? There's rumors we don't even know about yet. Yeah. Right. I promise. There is so much going on in this movie. Deadpool Wolverine has so much going on in it, and I hope it stays a secret. I hope all of it is able to stay a secret. There's so much of it. There's. I'll tell you what. This is a movie where when people come to me, like the people who I get, to, like who we get to talk to and stuff, uh, that usually are how I get sort of like some sources. Basically, they'll come to me and say, "Hey, I got this thing about Deadpool three one nine. I'm I literally say, "No, I don't want to know. I don't want to break this news. I don't want to break my own heart. Just let me experience this movie. Uh, maybe um, maybe you know, there's people, there's people above me in this in in our job here." that would uh be like what the hell you mean you don't want to no no i just don't want it will piss off our audience it'll piss off ryan reynolds it'll piss off disney and marvel it'll piss me off so you know what let us all i'm doing my best to preserve the experience i've already heard a couple things and i'm like i wish i didn't know that (laughs) so don't tell me anything else this movie has a lot of a lot of surprises in it it does make me wonder like how much the Fox verse supporting characters are really going to be in this movie. Cause it's like, we all saw them in the birthday party scene in the trailer. I'm curious if like there's something beyond that and that's how he knows that there's all of these extra cameos or if he might just be talking about all of those characters reuniting in that scene. Oh, there's some beyond that. I, I don't know who, how many people he shared a set with, but there's definitely yeah. stuff beyond that. Can I can I tell the people at home a little, little bit inside baseball? Brandon be sparing people sometimes, guys. Yeah, like he don't know everything, but he knows some yeah. things, and he well, be tell saving you y'all from y'all selves. I joke we... with him a lot. Go ahead, BD. There is one person at Comic Book who sometimes gets info, who has his own sources, and he doesn't give you a spoiler warning. Mm-hmm. He just comes right out to you and says, "Oh, I heard, I heard this." He'll something, and that's that's ten second Viscardi. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, uh, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, blessing and a curse. Jim and I, we, we know we like are very fortunate to be in this position where we know people who who know things and stuff like that. It's very helpful for this line of work, and that's kind of we talk about movies for a living. So I can't complain. Oh my God, something got spoiled for me. But when you I have been, <laughs> let me tell you a story real quick. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say any characters or anything, any movies specifically, but Jim and I were sitting in a bagel shop in downtown Nashville. We're taught, we're swapping kind of some stuff we know about upcoming titles. This was, I'd say three years ago, Jim and I are sitting there. We're swapping a couple of, you know, things we know that we haven't shared yet. We're like pretty sure, or we know for sure. That's also one other thing. Sometimes you hear things and you're only pretty sure it's true. It's a pretty reliable source, but I'm not willing to attach my name to it yet. Cause I'm not, I can't, I can't afford to be wrong on this kind of thing. But this one was definitely a fact because we're swapping some stuff. We're talking about one specific movie. We're going back and forth about one specific movie. And Jim goes, Oh, you want to see something really cool? I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to say, yeah, yeah. What is it about the? So actually, I didn't clarify. I assumed because we were talking about one specific movie, he was going to stay on topic. And all of a sudden, he turns his phone around, shows me a picture of something from a completely different movie about a completely different character that I didn't know was in it. Just a photo of him, and I was like, "You son of a! I wish I didn't know that." And that's why Jim lives in his jail cell, okay? Because if you let him out, all nobody's safe. The, the 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 10 seconds on Disney Plus aren't safe. Our <laughs> our experiences at the movie the I'll never I said, Jim, we were talking about this movie. Why would you show me that? And he was like, I thought we were just talking about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like Jim, right? We love Jim. We love Jim. But honestly, to be fair, that's the last time he did that to me. <laughs> now he'll call For me now. And he'll, say, he'll say, I heard something really good about this movie. You want to know? And I'll be like, Will I like it? And he'll be like, Yeah, I think you will. And I'll be like, is it Iron Man? No. Okay, don't tell me. That's pretty much <laughs> it. That's pretty much it. Oh man. Anyway, sorry to derail us while we're already running late on time. Weird X Force movie details. Jeff Wadlow to uh, a trip to the movies uh, with Alex Zane. 
quote, my pitch for the movie was, if X-Men is about mutants that get to go to private school, what about mutants that get to go to public school? What's so wrong with public school? Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I wrote about this movie that was very, I wrote this movie that was very much inspired by the original X-Men run back in the 90s. I introduced Cable as this dark mentor for our characters. It was definitely about the young mutants, formerly known as New Mutants. In my movie, it was Cannonball, Boom Boom, and I aged Domino down. Richter was there. Farrell was there. I put them on this road movie. I modeled it after Red Dawn. They were on the run in West Texas. This feels like um, like a pre-Deadpool story. What yeah. was the context? Okay, like a pre-Deadpool 1 movie. Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. Uh, you know, it would have been cool. It would have been better than New Mutants, it sounds. But I, I don't have strong feelings about this. I like what we got. So, Aaron, what, Aaron what's, what's going on? Deadpool was going to be the villain tracking them across the oh. course of the movie. As That's what it sounds guy. like. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm... That would have been the introduction to him instead of what we got, which I'm just like, oh, what a different timeline. That would be very strange. Very weird. Very different. This just sounds cool. Like, I, I don't know how great of a movie it would have been, but it would have just been fun to see. And it would have been like a very distinct point of view. So I I, I, I didn't even know this movie existed until I looked at the rundown today, but I, I do kind of mourn this a little bit. Mm. It would have been fun, but I would rather have seen Channing Tatum's Gambit movie than this personally I, I actually and that's not an insult yeah. to this i actually really would have liked to see channing tatum's gambit Me too. uh real quick to john brown in the comment section talking about last week's phone call when i was trying to break <laughs> the news that news came out it wasn't as big of a deal as it seemed at the moment um I, I i was unaware that part of it was already out there uh the news came out it's on comic book you can go find it it was it was uh, you can go see what it was. Uh, I promise if you follow phase zero and comic book, you already found it. Um, we did it. We didn't end up breaking it, but we did end up covering it. So yeah, it wasn't as big of a deal, but you did get a look behind the curtain last week. And now let's, yeah. Say the topic we've all been waiting for. Yeah, Dakota Johnson is peeking back behind the curtain of Madam Webb. Uh, she spoke to Bustle and very quickly kind of has a response to the response to Madam Webb. She says, unfortunately, I'm not surprised that this has gone down the way that it has. It's so hard to get to get movies made and in these big movies that get made. And it's even starting to happen with the little ones, which is what we're really freaking me out. Decisions are being made by committees and the art does not do well when it's made by committee. Films are made by a filmmaker and a team of artists around them. You cannot make the art based on numbers and algorithms. My feeling has been for a long time that audiences are extremely smart and executives have started to believe that they are not. Audiences will always be able to sniff out BS. Even if films start to be made by AI, humans are still going to, aren't going to effing want to see those. I mean, blame whatever you need to blame. I respect it. I don't think Madam Webb was Dakota Johnson's fault entirely, or even mostly, but she's, she's, she's over this. She also still hasn't even watched it yet. So I, I almost wonder in her Anybody mind else? what the version of the movie is that exists. Because I, yeah, I don't blame her. I don't blame any of the cast and crew of this movie. I just, I think it was a lot of confluence of things. And even then, as I have said on the show, I still find it incredibly watchable. So. <laughs> the, the funniest part about all this, I never thought we'd be getting led against the robot apocalypse by Dakota Johnson. But here we are. <laughs> <laughs> my girl with her thousand yard stare just like leading us into the charge like some sort of weird version of sarah connor um i really there is so much weird stuff that happened behind the scenes I, in, in a different period we would get like a tell-all book or someone would do an oral history and it would really give us the meat and potatoes of what the heck happened behind the scenes but when you have people at your own company at the studio telling you not to market a movie that is clearly about a spider-man adjacent character without any references to spider-man whatsoever there something's bad in the pasta sauce i don't know i can't call it um <laughs> it's just very weird the whole thing just like reeks to me and also this is the second time she's made a joke about ai writing the movie which makes me go what the heck happened you see, what are you see, talking about with that that's 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 the that's the right thing okay so has anybody confirmed that the writers of this movie are real people? We yes, met them. Er me and er Jamie talked Jamie to them. Met them. Me and Jamie talked to them. No, 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 no. You met two <laughs> crisis actors. You met two oh, crisis no. actors. Let's not, let's not start that. Let's not start that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they, I, they, I, and you guys did say they were lovely, they were nice great people. people. 
Uh, and, and but you look at their track record, and I, you know, I love to be positive. I don't yeah. like to 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 harp on negatives, but I I do find it like that their their Rotten Tomatoes track record is brutal. Uh, and I don't think anybody was surprised by Madam <laughs> Web. I remember that culture crave tweet that showed all the previous Rotten Tomato scores, and I was like, "Yikes, uh, man!" Whoa. Yeah, that was. Uh... But uh, honestly, Dakota Johnson, she did speak facts, so we we she's got a point. Um, right. But I don't think AI hurt Madam Web. No. Oh, oh, God, that's so funny. BD's conspiracy nugget of the week. From Matthew Harrison, <laughs> some stamina MC that the Millie Vanilli of the movie world, but they're just going out there with a weird backup track. Oh, oh my oh, god, guys, I love you. All. People who watch this show, you make us talk about you. this. Great, nine hundred plus people watching live right now. Wow, uh, thank you so much for joining us live on Wednesday. We do it every week. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Phase Zero channel. And listen to our podcast and all everybody who's listening in podcast form. We love you guys too. We wish you could join us live, but we're happy to bring you the uh, the Marvel news every Wednesday and the Road to Deadpool Wolverine with new X Men movie reviews every Monday. Also, X Men ninety seven. We'll have our reactions to that next week. So stay tuned to Phase Zero because we will be spoiler free. Uh, and then our Wednesday shows, uh, the the Phase Three of every Wednesday show will be a X Men ninety seven episode reaction starting March twentieth which is a two episode premiere for X-Men 97. So that's really cool. Uh, one last thing about Dakota Johnson, when I read that quote and I just read everything she's been saying about the movie and how she never wants to do it again, like she's realizing it was like really poorly received. And I assume I was like, you know what? She probably watched that clip of us with the comic book because that went so viral. But then I was like, dude, <laughs> she was there. <laughs> like <why? laughs> she lived that clip. Like what? Why? why? <laughs> I just had a moment of being like, why? Would, yeah. Uh, so Madam Webb, did y'all see Sydney Sweeney murder the movie on SNL? Yes. Yes. She said, I watched her tilt to roll slam it. Oh, <laughs> she said, you may have seen me in Euphoria or anyone but you, but you definitely did not see me in Madam Web. Has this movie crossed $20 yet? <laughs> I will say, because people saw Sydney's quote and they were like, this is the next step in this movie achieving cult status. Because like, she's going to say this now and then maybe in like 10 or 15 years, she's going to be like introducing a midnight showing of it at like a theater somewhere. So the so tide will probably change. T 10 years from now, when someone else plays Madam Web, is there going to be when? an Andrew Garfield renaissance? A Hayden Christensen appreciation turnaround where the, the fans are going to be clamoring for Dakota Johnson to come oh, back Jesus. and play Madam Web again. We're, we're going to do the Catwoman, Jennifer's body thing with this movie. That's what we're going to do. That's what's going to happen. Which, by the way, happened. That, those are yeah. things that exist. There are people that would stand those things. So I don't know. Like, it's not, like, I keep telling people, I don't think it's the worst movie I've ever seen. That's not true. Like, I think a lot of this is heightened by, like, all other stuff that's going on outside and other things. But also, there's no there's no hide that it's Morbin Time Part 2. <laughs> there, there's no hide in that. It's webbing time. It's yep. webbing time. Mm. You know what time it is on Phase Zero? Uh-oh. It Richard. is time for Aaron Perrine to bring you get your dip ready and your milk because it's hot. Don't drink water after it because it'll make it worse. It is time for Aaron's Spicy Nugget of the Week. Yeah, Richard, drop that basket. We, we get we get real <laughs> spicy today. So uh, over the last three weeks, there is one comment strain that has happened in these phase zero streets more than any other. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of what you want. Usually I, I'm like, whatever, like especially this sort of nebulous stuff. But multiple Marvel scoopers have said that Henry Cavill has signed on to play a role or the advanced talks play some sort of role in the MCU. No other context is given. People keep teasing. Oh, you guys aren't going to believe it's going to be so weird. It's going to be so wild. What role do you think former Superman war Warhammer enthusiast Henry Cavill is playing in the MCU? <laughs> I will just say I don't want it to be Hyperion. I know that has been a very popular fan cast for yep. years now. I because I will just see Henry Cavill as Hyperion. I will not be able to like that will that will break my immersion a little bit. And as a Squadron Supreme fan, like I don't want that. Um, I think it's gonna be something Secret Wars related. Like just based off of what the rumor mill seems to be saying. I don't know if that means like molecule man or Ooh. 
anyone, I don't know, like some sort of supporting player in Secret Wars is who I could probably see it being. James right. Braddock plays a role in Secret Wars, right? That is true. So it's right there. Captain Britain's right there. Uh, I, I would like I would like that. I think that'd be a fun role for him. Uh, and it's probably not one that would require him to be insanely involved and schedule it. Like, I don't think Captain Britain's going to get a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do think Captain Britain could be showing up here and there. Uh, it's a little on the nose, <laughs> but. Listen, Captain, Br Captain Britain miniseries directed by Matthew Vaughn, who says no. Uh, <laughs> a long time ago, BD is right, y'all. There were sources indicating that they had plans for the character. Like right around the time when you hear started hearing all that stuff about there being a, a Captain Carter thing that was in development in live action, which I don't know if Haley Atwell even knows that was a thing. Does she know? I hope. Um, one of the people in the chat has something that would be both divisive that half the fan base would really be excited about, the other half would not. So I, I feel like him as him as the surfer, it, it is it is an interesting prospect. Let me just say that. You need very well defined cheekbones, I suppose, <laughs> to be a big silver. I could man. see that. I could see that too. But I, that that also seems like something that would have leaked or been announced. Like if you're just gonna let a, let the salvo go, unless you're gonna trot him out there at San Diego Comic Con, I don't I don't see anything else. Like I thought for the Captain Britain thing, I thought he might have ended up being in Blade. Oh. Mm. And we were just gonna go. We were just gonna go full. Ao, like chip, uh, crisps, crisps, and beer, uh, or blade, <laughs> and that would have been great. But uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's happening. So I don't know. Cavill bald scares you, Jacob Therford? Me too. Me too. He can't I'm... be more bald than Austin Butler is in Dune, because that is oh, the bald. <laughs> you know what? He would be great at Silver Surfer. He would I... be amazing at being unworldly. I selfishly want him to play a bigger role than that, like something that is a little bit more recurring, but I could definitely see that. I would not be unhappy with that. I think it's just a matter of time until we find out Henry Cavill is playing someone in the MCU, though. I think yeah. he's joining. I think he's joining. And also, I want to put a little context to some of this scooper stuff you see on Twitter. All, all, all Twitter's not that big of us. The bubble is not that big. Everybody's just whispering behind the scenes in their DMs talking and sharing little scoopy things. A lot of them all talk about the same thing. Some of them start teasing it. Some of them don't know. Some of them just trust each other. Some of them do know. So when you see all this stuff about a scooper said this, scooper said that, uh, a scooper teased this, a scooper teased that, but they did it vaguely. They're not giving context, all that kind of stuff. It is also like a situation where a lot of people just have similar sources. They are each other's sources. One person says one thing. They all message each other and say, what do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Sometimes they tell each other. Sometimes they don't. Uh, it, it is like there's a little whisper network and that's what people call it. Uh, and uh, once you're in it, you kind of hear all the same stuff from people. And then sometimes people keep their secrets and they break some news. Uh, so it is, it's just an interesting uh, bubble that we operate in here. Um, and I, I, I don't really do scoops much uh, anymore. Like, I, like I said earlier, I try to just experience this stuff because it also just doesn't drive that much traffic to the site. It doesn't make you that much money to break news. Um, especially when some outlets are like, oh, well, we're not going to link to people. Uh, you know, it, it drives up your Google stance. It helps you when you break news and people link back to you. It helps the whole website and the brand grow, obviously. But it also pisses people off. Like, so it's like you got to walk the fine line. Is this big casting news worth? Like, is this a spoiler? Is this something that's going to be in the trailer? Is this some, or is this a surprise? It's kind of a fine line. Um, well, everybody's getting some, uh, some, some just behind the scenes insights on today's show. I'm sorry. I'm just derailing us. Uh, but all right, hey, 950 people watching live. Thank you so much wow. for joining us this Wednesday. Uh, also, piece of news I want to share with everybody because it just came in while we were doing Phase Zero. The Phase Zero channel, thanks to all of you watching today and for the past few years with us, has officially crossed 25 million views on YouTube. 25 million views for phase zero that doesn't include podcast audio downloads that is strictly the phase zero youtube channel has hit the quarter century million mark uh so thank you so much to everybody who has been a part of the phase zero community from the jump thank you to everybody who has joined along the way we love doing this show uh it's a highlight of the week for me so i appreciate y'all thank you so much for being with us jenna any last words for today's show 
first of all, that is so wild that we have crossed that number. That is so cool to see. Um, it's at Hey, it's Jenna Lynn on social media. As always, go read some comics. There is a new She-Hulk arc that is starting this week that is absolutely delightful and a new Birds of Prey arc that is incredible. So those are two of my favorite comics being published right now. So if you need something to read, start with those. Aaron Perrine. It's at Summit Lake Corner on Twitter. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I'd also like to plug Jamie Dirac's Harvey Guillen interview. They got picked up yeah. by THR and other places because she is not here to pimp that out herself. So that's great. And also go read comicbook.com for all your weird updates about things. I, now me and Jamie have to go go to Star Tours because Ahsoka and the Mandalorian and the Andor are on it. Although I can't imagine the Andor sequence fits totally with anything no. else going on in Star Tours at <laughs> Absolutely all. Absolutely not. So. <laughs> all right, y'all. That's our show today. Thank you so much for riding with us. On Monday, we have X-Men Origins Wolverine as our Road to Deadpool and Wolverine review of the week. Uh, and then we will be back on Wednesday for another standard edition of our epic, amazing, you know, MCU news, debate, chaos, chonky show. And we hope to see you there. Subscribe to the channel. Play our show for your mom. Play it for your dogs. If YouTube counted dog views, we'd be at 70 million by now. So thank <laughs> you so much uh, for that. And we appreciate you guys. We hope you have a fun time with us every Wednesday. Uh, see you on Monday. Have a good weekend, everybody.